So in the smoke alarm community, people ask me how rare certain things are. So I'm going to try to help answer this question to you in the simplest way possible. So obviously we have two sides of the community, one being vintage, one being modern. A lot of the time modern enthusiasts don't know a lot about the vintage devices while the vintage enthusiasts outright trash the modern ones. Understandably. I'm in both sides of the community at 100% and appreciating the evolution of different smoke alarms. But that's mostly besides the point. If you don't know how to categorize an alarm that you find in terms of home searching, buying alarms off eBay, or just going to your local Home Depot, Lowe's, or even a restore or junkyard, I'm going to help you the best I can. I will strictly be talking about smoke alarms only, avoiding any kind of system detectors linked to either a security system or a fire alarm system. Examples like these can include these ESL 445 and 449 series devices, or system sensor i3 or 2400 devices. Those are just examples I have in my collection to show you. Anyways, let's begin. So our main categories will be common, uncommon, rare, ultra rare, and nearly extinct. And also an extra category for the modern alarms still being produced today, which I don't have a creative name for, so I'm just going to call it modern. Which in this case, I'll just get it over with. So obviously there are the alarms like the Cancio SIM IBA or First Alert SC9120B as two very common examples. Smoke only variants can be seen here along with the CO only variants. So in the simplest terms, you can really consider these in the common category. However, when you are home searching, you'll find a lot less of the P4010 series along with these P1210s. Not these P1210s, the first gen P1210s. Speaking of, anything with a new logo can be considered rare. For now, at least. Since Kid and First Story just changed their logo on their devices, no, I am still not getting used to the new Kid logo. It makes them a lot harder to come across, or even new designs like the Kid 900 COA. Probably shouldn't have mentioned that thing. But depending on how you view it can vary. That's why things still produced today is in this modern category. Now let's actually get started with the actual categories. Let's start with common. My view on this category is to focus on things discontinued but still very easy to come across. These include the FireX FADC, unless it has black text on the back meaning it's a very late model. Similarly to the FireX ADC, the first alert 4120B and most similar devices made in the 2000s can be found a lot more. Kita 0915 and 0916 can be found here in this era too. 1275s and 1276 are also very common here. The Family Guard Puppy, uh, I'm sorry, FG88D and First Floor SA67Bs and Ds actually can also easily be found. In fact, you'll see a lot of these on eBay. A major part of your childhood. The Kida Cancio SMB can also be in this category. Notice how lots of vintage models are being omitted. And let's be honest, everyone knows these models that I've mentioned so far. You could also argue that the 2nd gen 86 RACs can be hard to find, and to be fair, they are annoying to find on eBay, despite them being one of the most popular 90s vintage smoke alarms out there. Yes, I said 2nd gen. I'll be coming back to the 86 RAC topic later. For now, let's just move on. Now we have the uncommon category. This is where a lot of people hit me personally. A lot of the time when someone sees a vintage alarm for the first time, they're probably going to say, it's probably the rarest smoke alarm known to existence. They probably just said it's rare and maybe even over exaggerated when in all reality you just find your first FX1218. Now, the FX1218s are only in here. They're not common, but not rare. They're difficult to come across on eBay, of course, but easy to find when home searching, as from what I've seen a million of them. A similar scenario can be found with the BRK1839. BRK1839 series devices, aside from maybe the 1839 ACI, which is a tad rarer, heck, even the BRK769 ACI and 4919 can be found pretty quickly, but not the easiest grabs on eBay, especially the 769 ACI. I seem to come across more of those than the 1839 ACIs, as long as you have the specific date filters applied. Even the SA150 LTs can be found pretty often. Other models having the opposite scenario being easy to find on eBay are the first floor SA90LT, SA88, BRK83R, 
Fanatics 0905, Jameson CD1, and even those Snoopy ones I see sitting on eBay that literally nobody cares for. But if you're looking to start collecting vintage stuff, this is a good start. Usually these more common listings will remain inexpensive, and as for going forward, be prepared to spend a lot on alarms in the next category. Rare. Detector inflation is a problem in the smoke alarm community and goes for a lot of rare devices. They are a lot harder to find but still acceptable to come across many times. This can go with pretty much most of the Sears units, which are very commonly overpriced. For example, the 350 Professor 045 I got costed around $65 for my mom. And that Sears is actually a rebrand of the Firenetics F900D first generation, which belongs in this category as well. Some rebrands will sometimes stay in the category since they're basically the same unit, if not rarer, like take the two I just mentioned. Out of my past experience, I seem to find more of the original Firenetics model than the Sears model. The Kita 2070, specifically True Senses, can be put here in this category as well. A lot of rarities can include the Dicon 350, Family Guard FG1000C, Jameson CD32, various BRK models such as the 1769 ACI, 77R, and 79R, Code 1 AD and Model GN G18, the Honeywell TC49A and CD200A, Firenetics 0906 and 0908, Smoke Guard 800A, and 907A2, Todd I Wonder Brick D1, or the 7XD11, whatever the heck my model is, Smokey Silver 4002, the funny guy face, Smoke Lord, oh wait, I'm sorry, First Alert, SA76RS, RC, and RD models, along with the first gen SA67Ds with the white test button, and probably the most classic ones, the General Electric 821301, and, um, this artifact, which I believe is a C4. That's just to name a few, and if in Canada things may be a bit different, you'll have stuff like the Norton TR88, Guardian FB1A and FRU-2, American Sisters COS 2010. As promised, the first gen and third gen 86 RACs also belong in this category. Oh, that's weird. It does code 3. Of course, there are other rare alarms out there, but these are the most basic and original ones that people may know about easily. However, this isn't the case with the next category. Let's take it up a notch. Now we have the ultra rare category, pretty much the rare stuff on steroids. Some people may argue on this category, but we all have different opinions on how we view certain things. So it's okay if you have a different opinion. Anyways, the D2. Y'all know how rare the D2 is, right? Never heard of it? Well, basically, it's one of two scenarios of a varying frequency sounder, which is only to be revived by the first floor atom, sort of. Speaking of atoms, the three colors of the P1000s can come in copper, silver, and cherry wood, which are all equally as rare. And I actually have two of them. And no, these models appear to not exist. So y'all see where this is going. The Kita Silhouette series can go here since their design made them a lot harder to come across as the rechargeable battery design, which is a mistake. Especially for the KNCO PFI with a two gang box requirement, which is why nobody has still never found one in a home before. And besides, they look like a thermostat. The rest of the True Sense alarms, like the 2040, 2050, and 2060 series lineup, these are also considered ultra rare as well. Alright, let's just talk about vintage stuff. We have models like the Gillette Captain Kelly 941 and ESL 206, the 206 being rarer. And then we got more like the Jameson CD23, ESL 906, GE8203001. Alright, let's just get crazier. Wake and Warn 6S19 is at 76, which I am the only person to own. Vanguard Smoke Sonic, which I am also think I'm the only person to own. Black Nest Protect. Firex FADCQ, 6040, and COE, which, um, yes, there is a COE in there. BRK, or First Lord SC6120B, and the original CO5120. The Firex FXB-1 and FX830. Family Guard FG777. Status Roll Smoke Guard 700A, Honeywell TC89B, Diacon 440, Entronic Vigilante Z100, Firenex 1200, Universal SS200, First Alert CO5120 PDBN, also this BRK equivalent found by Adam. Trust me, I'll go back to him soon. 
But the list just goes on and on. I could be here forever, but I really want to wrap up this last category because it needs a lot of explanation. And by a lot, I mean a lot. <sighs> Nearly extinct. Y'all know what I'm going to say for this one. And I'll say it again. The BRK SS718 is my favorite smoke alarm of all time and is currently my top holy grail. One day I'll acquire it, but for now y'all just stuck with an April Fool's video. Now, these have some history to them. Very close to the Smoke Guard 700, the SS718 was one of the first smoke alarms ever produced for the public, as used in homes. A lot of people may be able to distinguish these looking like this, which I'm going to be honest looks like a bathroom fan at first. Actually, Scott made this mistake before, so um, usually why I bought it up, but we got the exhaust fans already, so um, yeah, let's just get this over with. Yeah, they look at a bathroom fan at first, but then you slowly realize smoke alarms in bathrooms are not allowed. <laughs> the SS718 made its debut in 1969 after many prototype models being made in around the 60s. But this caused a problem. Take a look at this ad. Notice the pricing on these being worth the same amount as buying a freaking Nest Protect in 2023. And remember, this was back in the late 60s to early 70s. Pop this regular price in an inflation calculator and you get a price of $957.18. That's the equivalent to 8 brand new Nest Protects. Only the wealthy can buy these Nest Protects in modern day. This is why the SS-17s are nearly extinct. Nobody can afford them at all. Now these received a slight upgrade in around 1973 using a plastic shell instead of the straight up metal ones to hopefully reduce costs, at least that's what I think it is. Similarly, the BRK SS749 and SS74R was a very similar case to the SS718, but this caused another problem. Take a look at this ad about the SS749. Oh, yeah, the irony of a smoke alarm starting a fire. <coughs> the funny thing is, Kid has more recalls than you. <laughs> okay, but back to this. They actually started a fire kind of like the TC-49A? Really? They started fires too? Anyways, these are recalled shortly after their production, making these nearly extinct as well. Now, I've been talking for a while, but there are more factors contributing to the near extinct category. And that is the rebrands of the SS-718 and SS-74R. Oh yeah, you guys saw this coming too. You guys have may have seen a short video of mine on this topic about the SS-718 rebrands, which is basically 15 seconds long. Like this Ademco, which looks like literally a round version of the original BRK model. Oh yeah, Adam found this too. Here is an ad. We also have this Pyro Sentinel that I found actually on my 1000 subscriber special. And this Magnevix one, which I'm not really entirely sure about. But I know at least Horvath owns it. And as for the SS74R, there is the Sears one that BANF Vintage owns. Not much to say here though. And before finishing up, I might as well talk about the never seen before alarms. Uh, <coughs> well, originally never seen before until Adam somehow finds them and gets praised for it while I over here get manualed. This Elko model is the first and only known to exist. Here's an ad for like the 10 million time this video. We also have alarms like this Unitech UT-312A, which, um, yeah, SCR Safety is still the only known person to have one. Yes, I wanted to mention that because he still hasn't made a video on it, and I actually kind of want him to make one on it. I hope to expect a video soon. And also this West Clots with a test button, which Adam also found. And at my home turf, Long Island, New York, he ends up finding one of these Presto Smoke Sirens, which I still cannot believe he found something nearly extinct in my area. Oh wait, scratch that. He finds two! And also take note of this gray lifesaver, Edward Scout, and what appears to be a prototype SA-76RS. Now his luck pretty much got completely off the charts and N. Lind even gave him a shout out. We were all so proud of Adam that day because this is like a huge huge turnaround for the community. Oh yeah, callback to when he found a freaking SS-718. I win! P3010... James! P3 James! 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 Oh, found your holy grail! 
I hate you. <laughs> so that was the video. This is my first time working with a script and this took me a day to write actually. And since I had some time during spring break, I had the opportunity to make this video. Hope this may give a better understanding of the rarities of some smoke alarms depending on- Huh, some car just popped bubbles. I don't know if it was a familiar person. <laughs> Anyways, I hope this gave a better understanding of the rarities of some smoke alarms depending on how you view it. Usually, the older the date, the rarer the alarm is. From the SS718 to the 1769 ACI to the 1839 N to the 86 Raccoon to the 4919 to the 9120B to the police manual. Okay, you can tell it's getting more common by the year. Like, let's just, let's face it. And in the future, we will have things like the Kitta 900 COA. I really gotta stop bringing that smoke alarm up. It's a big disgrace. I don't know why it was released to replace the IBAs. During my scavenging, I ended up finding the classic 60s BRK logo, so enjoy.